And then there were four. Championship weekend awaits. Who's heading to Vegas? What am I working with? Dan, you have to take a, a finger. I, I feel for you all. You can do that. You'll only lose by 20. <laughs> Hello, four teams left in the running for the Lombardi Trophy. Two of the divisional games as wide as we thought and two that were tighter than we imagined. Don't know about you, but it still feels like there might be a sting in the tail somewhere here. It's incredibly boring. How is that yeah, boring? Uh, Carry on. Shut up, you. <laughs> if anybody mentions Taylor Swift, it's a straight red card and a two-pod ban. We got everything right last week. Yeah, cruised it last week. I'm pretty sure I only got one wrong. Professional, one wrong. <laughs> Unbelievable. I tell you what, I tell you what, it's <laughs> Welcome along then to Utter Punts in association with endzonekit.co.uk and Beer Keller, where we're having a party on Sunday. Alongside me in Manchester, it's Ravens fan Dan Horton, who isn't showing a single sign of any kind of nervous tension. Not a single bit. Evening, Dan. I'm, no, not that the game's finished. I'm not, no, nice and cool now, I'm at my cave. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We'll see. Uh, in Birmingham, we would normally have Big Dave Keane, but he's so done with this season that he's launched himself down a flight of stairs. I mean it, down a flight of stairs to avoid being with us tonight. So instead, we've got young Ollie the punt intern. Hi, Ollie. You're all right. I told him not to wear his high heels down the stairs, but he ignored my advice. Yeah, Davina at the weekends. Uh, and on the way, we will chat about what happened last week, what's coming on this week. We will talk about the news of the week, including Fangio. That I never saw that one coming. And a couple of other bits as well. It's going to be brilliant. And a couple of little hints and tips for where you might like to have a flutter at the weekend. This is Utter Punts. Evening all. Um, this is uh, quickly coming around to the end of the season. It, 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 it is absolutely lightning. Once you get to the playoffs, all of a sudden, before you know it, it's, it's the Super Bowl yeah. and it's two weeks away, essentially two mm -hmm. weeks and three days, something like that, yeah. until we end up uh, at Super Bowl. Are we both fairly confident that we anticipated once the playoffs started that this was the position that we would be in? Or are we surprised that the Bills aren't there and the Chiefs are, Dan? Uh, uh, well, yeah, I, I I thought the Bills would get there. I thought the Bills were the team in the AFC, really, and they were the team I'd, I'd be more worried about facing if I was a Baltimore mm -hmm. fan, which I am. Um, if, if but the, the injuries they picked up in Week 18 and then again in Week in the in the wild card really just took them out. They had eight starters out on defense against the Kansas City Chiefs, and and they they took full advantage of it. So I'm I'm disappointed the Bills aren't there because I think that would have been a a barnstormer of a game of healthy Bills versus a healthy, healthy Ravens. The NFC, I think, is, has gone to scripts, really. Mm -hmm. um, I said before, Dave, Dave's turned into the Cowboys. He's good all season, flashes of brilliance, and then disappears in the playoffs. Yeah. Um, <laughs> exactly what Dave's done. And, and really, the, the best two teams in the NFC have been the 49ers and have been the Lions, and um, it's good to see them both there. Great for Detroit. Um, they, they've been on an amazing run, and, and that, that'll be a good game. I'm looking forward to both games. But, yeah, I'd, everyone thought Ravens and 49ers. It probably still looks that way. Um, and what a Super Bowl that would be. Oli, I said in the intro that it feels like it's been such an unpredictable season, really. There have been some real shock results. It still feels to me like there might be an unexpected sting in the tail here. Is there a chance that Detroit actually make it to Las Vegas? Yeah, I think there's definitely a chance. I mean, they're a very well-coached team with a very dangerous offense. And their pass rush is dangerous as well. You know, they've got the momentum. They've had the home crowd on side for the past two games. So that's obviously an advantage they're not going to have in San Francisco. But I think there's always a chance. I mean, they're one of the most well-rounded teams, but I just think San Francisco has more star power. They've got home field advantage. So we'll see. Momentum. Mm -hmm. Momentum. Momentum. You're not a fan <laughs> of momentum, are you? It's a thing. Yeah, he just doesn't think it's a thing. Um... <laughs> I, it was interesting. I was watching. Uh, I was watching. Uh, was it Jared Goff who was doing pre-match media this week? And one of the questions to him was, "You know, you've got some good players here." <laughs> so he in said Detroit, thank you, didn't and he yeah, said yeah, thanks. Yeah. And then he said, "But you haven't really got the star power that, uh, that San Francisco have got." And there was some glib comment back from Jared Goff to to the judge. So I'll take it back then. <laughs> uh, which really made me smile this week. If you haven't seen it, it's all over. Uh, it's all over X and other places where you get your NFL news from. Made me laugh quite a lot. But it, after Ollie mentioned um, star power, there, I think uh, I think you're probably right. I think. You know, when you look at that San Francisco team, they should be making the Super Bowl. I just think that out of the two games that are going to be played this weekend, 
the one where I'm really anticipating a shot could come if it was going to come anywhere isn't in the Ravens game. It's more in the it's more in that Detroit San Francisco game. Well, I think I think I think that's because you know we'll come to the game previews in a second, so you know we'll save a bit of the stats and things for then. But mm-hmm. the Chiefs Ravens game really is a is a toss of a coin because if the Chiefs make the Super Bowl. Well, of course they do. Yeah. They make it every year, right? Um, Whereas well, the other one, it is a bit of a David V. Goliath. It is a perennial championship team. They think they've made five of the last six, the 49ers, against a team that hasn't been there since the 90s. I mean, it's a it's a massive it's a massive uh, underdog story, the Lions game. And so that would be more of a shock because no one really had the Lions in the Super Bowl at the start of the season, whereas mm-hmm. the Chiefs, the Ravens, were probably in most people's AFC list. So, yeah, you're right. And um, the games will be will be fascinating because what, what's happened before has no influence on what happens on Sunday and the games start fresh um, and we'll see what happens. It's, it's strongest team wins, best team wins. Shall we, um, shall we do some news before we move on? Mm-hmm. I know we've got um, fewer games to preview this week so we can spend a little bit more time talking about uh, other bits and pieces but I, I thought the news was, was quite interesting. You're a mm-hmm. late substitution, Ollie, and uh, yeah. when you were subbed in, you immediately tried to claim a news story that I'd already <laughs> claimed. So tough luck, you've got to play the cards that your uncle Dave had dealt, which is, um, you know, Vic Fangio. Yeah, um, well, I'm happy to do it. Uh, <laughs> Vic... So Vic Fangio, the defensive coordinator for the Dolphins, has parted by mutual consent. Now there's he's the fir- he's going to be the first. For those that are listening, def- he just did those air quotes. You know, <laughs> mutual consent with the with the two fingers in the air on each hand. Yeah, go on, carry on. Uh, after he's departed, uh, they're going to have to hire a new DC, obviously, mm-hmm. and that's going to be Mike McDaniel's third defensive coordinator Oof. in three seasons as head coach. Wow. Um, yep. And you know. He hasn't done that bad. They've improved on their stats last year. They were 10th in yards allowed, but 22nd in points given up. Uh, third in sacks, 56 sacks, and 8th in forced turnovers with 27. But there are a few key games this season that made people feel that they were a bit of a a, a joke compared to what they should have been. I mean, I it reminds me from a personal perspective of the Vikings last year, 13-4, and four, which was a false record, and you know we got to the playoffs, got knocked out in the wild card round, and the two results I've picked out here is they lost forty eight twenty to the Bills in week four, and they lost fifty six nineteen to the Ravens in week seventeen. Now I know the Ravens are the most complete team in the NFL, but to lose by that scoreline when you're yeah. meant to be one of the more competitive teams in the AFC is not gonna, you know, that's on defense right there. And I think Mike McDaniel and the Dolphins they want to be known as a well rounded team like Baltimore, like Kansas City, like the 49ers, and you could even say like Detroit now. But they're not. They're known for offense, and, you know, if Tyree Kill is injured, that whole team capitulates immediately, and that's not what McDaniel's striving for. And I also think there's now you're seeing a trend in the NFL where the old-fashioned defensive coaches are starting to become less and less popular, Mm. even... Someone like Bill Belichick, who's considered the GOAT head coach, you know, he's only been interviewed for one job, the Atlanta Falcons. More if on he that doesn't get that job, mm-hmm. If he doesn't get that job, you know, he might sit out for a year, he may retire, who knows? So I think offensive coaches are becoming more fashionable because of the athletic nature of the quarterbacks involved in the I, NFL I, currently. I think, it, I think you're absolutely right. I think it also runs so, deeper than that. Hmm. And you look at sport across the piece and... What you're finding is in many sports now, that more aggressive, more attacking, yeah. more flowing style is actually what's putting bums on seats and therefore is what everybody wants to play. It's bad ball, isn't it? It's yeah. bad ball in cricket. It's, it's, um, you know, it's the young, excited, everyone wants the young, exciting head coach, but it wasn't, I, I'm disappointed a little bit. It, it was it was sort of forewritten that he, he spent some time with the Eagles uh, two years ago when, on that Super Bowl <coughs> run, um, and applied for the job but didn't get it. So he ended up going to Miami instead. Uh, and he's, I think Fangio's done a great job at Miami. Their defence their defense was certainly better. They had hit with a lot of injuries towards the end of the season. And actually, towards the end of the season, it was their offence, I felt, that went in the tank. Not not, not so much the defence. It put the defence under more pressure, of course. But when they lost Jalen Phillips, yeah. when they lost Bradley Chubb, they, they, they're, the, they're, the, they're the front of that team. And without the pass rush, it really put too much pressure on them. And <coughs> what's interesting on well, the other side is... The, sorry, go on, Al. Oh, I was just going to say, it's funny Dan mentioned the Eagles, his consultancy... Um, in, during their Super Bowl run in 22-23 because according to Adam Schefter the Eagles are hiring Vic Fangio as their defensive yeah. coordinator yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was going to say so and the, the other side of it that the Eagles are hiring him Nick Sirianni is I think lucky to keep his job because when you when you see a head coach have to fire every single member of his coaching yeah. staff 
and rehire, it tells you that the owner has said, you've got one last chance, build a team, and he's gone to people. He's now, it'll be interesting to see who the offensive court ends up in, in Philadelphia, but with Sirianni and then with Fangio on the defence, I think watch out for the Eagles next year yeah. again. I think they'll they'll come back stronger, certainly. Um, you mentioned Bill Belichick, and mm. that's what Dan's talking about, and the fact that he could potentially, if he passes the job interview, be heading to Atlanta. Well, th- this is the thing, is he? Because he's, at, he's he's one of eight people they've interviewed twice already. He's yeah. only taken interviews with the Falcons, so he's only interested really in going there. There's only now three other head coaching jobs available um, since Jim Harbaugh's been appointed, which we'll, again you'll come to shortly. Um, and it, it's a concern. if Who's saying no? If he's been interviewed twice, this is the greatest coach in the history of the game. You've interviewed him, t- your, your, your franchise is a disaster. You, you need someone to come in and fix it. Yeah. If you gave Bill Belichick a decent quarterback, say they went and traded with the Bears and got Justin Fields, with B. John Robinson and Cardell Patterson yeah, and Drake decent. London and Kyle Pitts and a good offensive line, he can coach up the defence. That's that's a playoff team. <clears throat> but they're going to pass on him. And it's a bit like when Brady came from New England. Nobody, There wasn't really a market for, for, for Brady, if you remember. Nobody, the Raiders flirted with him a little bit, but never happened. The Chargers didn't happen. Um, he ended up going to Tampa Bay because everyone thought he was done. He went to Tampa Bay and won a Super Bowl. Are they passing on Bill Belichick? Are the Falcons actually going to leave Bill Belichick sat on the shelf and hire somebody younger and cooler? Like uh, they've interviewed Bobby Stoic, Slowick, haven't they, from the Houston Texans? I think they're waiting to interview Ben Johnson from the Lions because they're the trendy offensive mind. Yeah. Are they really going to pass on the greatest coach of all time? Because that seems very, very silly for a team that might yeah. just need rebuilding. I don't know. It Maybe. Seems, it's a and, strange and one to me. Interesting that Bill Belichick is only thinking of taking jobs in Atlanta. It's almost yeah. like he spent too long in the northeast of that country and needs a little bit of sunshine. Well, the fact he's got on a plane <coughs> and gone to see them twice, he's making the effort. Yeah. But is it is it his demands saying, I want this, I want I want this much control of the front office and they're not willing to give that up? Is it, are they saying we just want someone younger and cooler? Um uh, I just with, with you know, he's got he's got he's got the all time winning record in his sights with two good seasons. Mm-hmm. Um someone's gonna get the benefit of that, or are they? Uh, is he done? I mean, I just think it's shocking if people leave him on the shelf. I feel like um, the Falcons is the most complete job mm. right now in terms of he, he's old, right? He's 71, 72. He doesn't want to be walking into a uh, Carolina. Well, they've just got a new head coach, but, you know, a Carolina, a team of that ilk who needs a massive rebuild. The Falcons have got good weapons, you know, like you said, you know, Carl Pitts, B. John Robinson, uh, Drake London. All they really need pretty much is a quarterback and a coach who can take them far. And, you know, another option uh, could be Kirk Cousins, out of contract at the Vikings. Oh, you're a keen you, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all leads robots, all roads lead back to Kirk. I've got a right frog in my throat. It's doing my nutting. Um, uh, shall we move on quickly to Jim Harbour, who um, is back in the NFL, five year deal. Yeah. Um, with LA, and, and the reason that I've brought it up is I find this really interesting. There is a finite amount of time that you have to stake a claim of the sport in real estate in Los Angeles. Yeah. I think they've realized this at the Chargers and they've gone all out. So you look at what they've done, the stadium work, the redesign of the kit, the, you know, this, this little pieces of the puzzle have been put into place over the last couple of years. And what you've now got is a winning head coach who embodies football, who comes in with the potential to take that foundation that's been built and hopefully move it forward. And and what I find really interesting, took over Stanford that had finished 1-11, and 11, and then that was in 2007. In 2009, they finished 8-5. and five. The next season, they went 12-1, and one, including a win at the Orange Bowl. Yep. In 2011, came to the NFL, took over San Francisco 49ers. They went 6-10 and 10 the previous season, the season he wasn't there. The first year, they went 13-3, and three, made it to the championship game. 2012, the year after, they made the Super Bowl. They won 12 games and made it to a third consecutive conference championship in 2013. Yep. They then went 8-8, eight and eight, but... He has a winning record. He's never had a losing record as an NFL head coach. He is a winner. He comes into the NFL and he's already got the best winning percentage of any active NFL wow. coach. Wow. That, that's who you're talking So he, he goes straight into the number one slot there. So he's won more. His winning percentage is better than anybody else in the league. Incredible. Well, Belichick's retired. So he's not in the league at the minute. So that's why. But <clears throat> And you're right. The Chargers aren't their home team in their own home stadium. 
the away fans go there and fill that stadium, so yeah. they're playing on the road. What they have got 000. now is, Jim, Jim, you know, he's, he's, he's absolute box office. Yeah. He's not the best coach in his family, but he's, he's absolute box <laughs> office. And, and uh, finally, you know, Justin Herbert has somebody who is a, is a quarterback-friendly coach, and he will back his quarterback, and then they will fill the team around him. And I, it, now we'll see how good Justin Herbert is and carry, can he carry a team. But those two together should light up LA, and especially in a city like that with a market yeah. like that. You're absolutely right. <clears throat> I, think it's, I think it's a great hire. I think it's make or break, though. I've, I think if oh, he yeah. doesn't get them playing winning football, there's every chance that the Chargers don't stay in LA. And there's every chance that that, that franchise moves again, which would be absolutely astonishing. What have you made of this news, or? Well, I, I think, you know, when you look at the quarterbacks, that you said he never had a losing record, right? But look at the quarterbacks that Jim, Har- uh, Jim Harbour's had in his career. Colin Kaepernick, he got to the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. He just won a national title with J.J. McCarthy, who isn't even a top four quarterback in this draft class. So, you know, Justin Herbert is a top, probably, arguably yeah. a top five quarterback in the NFL. He's got the ability, everyone knows it, but Brandon Staley, as we all know, just wasn't good enough for the job and couldn't get enough out of him, out of this offense, which, you know, you look at the Chargers, they're not a bad roster. They've got some real talent on there. And I think if Jim Harbour can't get out of them, I don't, I don't really know who can. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. Let's move on, shall we? Because um, we wanted to try and keep this short and sweet this evening. <laughs> but you know what we're like. Nothing ever really goes short and sweet. Uh, so whilst we're thinking about what we're doing next, you can have a listen to the lovely guys at Endzone Kit. Utter Punts is proudly sponsored by one of the best kit suppliers out there, Endzone Kit. Endzone is a transatlantic company whose mission is to make finding kits a little bit easier and a little bit more affordable so you can represent your favourite American sports teams. Whether you're looking for NFL, college football, baseball, hockey or basketball memorabilia, Endzone's got you covered. With sizes from newborn up to 3XL, anyone can find something at endzonekit.co.uk. And one of the things that we love is that they have a whole range of retro and pre-loved gear so you can rock your vintage style while supporting your team. So why not head to endzonekit.co.uk and find yourself a bargain. And because you listen to Utter Punts, you can have a 15% discount at checkout when you use the code PUNTS. endzonekit.co.uk, the place to go for your American sports kit. Uh, welcome back to Utter Punts. We were just uh, quickly doing the mathematics around the stock market game. If you haven't been playing along with us, then you can next season once we get back underway. We pick four teams, one to do worse than they did, three to do better than they did. For every position, worse or better, they finished, depending on which one you picked, you get a point. Or if they finish the opposite way around, you get minus points. Hello. Mm. Uh, so, um, it's all it's all done. Yeah, it could have been worse. It could have, it could have been. <laughs> it wasn't great for me, but it definitely could have been worse. It could have been worse. I so finished on minus... Minus 12. That's oh, not bad. It's it could have been minus yeah, 19. The books, so. the books, the books and the, the commanders really uh, screwed you over. Yeah, they did. Um, minus 12. Dave finished on 23 when you got last week, so I was on 22 points. The Lions won, obviously, and they also they, the Texans and Packers lost. So the, the Lions already have t- um, now 10 points, 11 points, which means I'm on 25 which means I've won, yes. and they could end up with twenty nine, so I could All win right. by even further. So we I'm gonna, were... I'm gonna retire the lines there. Now we're done. <laughs> Save yourselves till next year, boys, where you'll be on the minus last side of this yeah. line. And I'm definitely going to hit up some experts before we play this next season yeah. that aren't called Dan or Dave because you, you, you sold me down. You the river. had my list. You could have taken any of those. You teams. sold me you down chose the river poorly. In uh, the words of the guy out of India, Ollie. Jones. I was just saying I was the expert you could turn to instead of those two. Yeah, you don't I might know which games are being played. You leg him up every week, so no, don't be listening to him. And no, no, to be to, to be to be fair, one of the weeks <laughs> may have been Ollie's fault. One of the weeks was definitely never my admit, fault. Never admit so, that. Never admit that. No, no, I'm quite I'm quite happy. <laughs> so yeah, so the game that Dave the game that Dave invented um, has had year one and, and I'm the champion. Yeah, thanks, Dave. Funny is that, that why you're not here? Uh, yeah, that's exactly why he's thrown himself down a flight of stairs. He is all right. We think just about Dave. He might not make it to the. Uh, championship watch party at the weekend at Beer Keller, but we will all be there. Ollie will be there. Dan will be there. I'll mm. be there. Producer Andy will be there. We've got some special guests coming too. If you'd like to get involved, tickets are still available. If you'd like to come to the championship weekend, I have a funny feeling all of the tickets for Super Bowl are now gone. But if you wanted to phone Beer Keller and find out, you absolutely could do that. Uh, just get in touch with Beer Keller at Manchester, either on their socials or by giving them a bell if you fancy coming down on Super Bowl night. Uh, let's do Fantasy Game Day, shall we? Our lovely friends at the Fantasy Game Day app. Um, they do daily fantasy and, well... 
Dave has had some success this season with mm. Fantasy Game Day. He's done very, very well. Right. Essentially, £7.50 for an entry if you register for the first time uh, and you put your £7.50 entry in. If you use the code PUNTS when you register, you get a free £7.50 entry uh, completely on us, which would be absolutely magnificent. So what we try and do is give you a little bit of guidance, a little bit of help, maybe some advice on where you could potentially spend your daily fantasy money Um there are only four teams to pick from this mm. weekend, which makes life a little trickier because one of them's the San Francisco 49ers and they're all mega expensive. <laughs> uh, Ollie, who have you gone with? Right, well, I didn't want to rub the people of the Brummy Vikings pick, so okay. this is Dave's pick, so if it, if it messes up, it's, it's his Dave's fault. Dave's fault, understood. It's I like what you've Dave's done there. Fault. It's very clever, Thank Ollie. You. Yeah. So now you mentioned the 49ers. <laughs> the pick is uh, at running back Christian McCaffrey. Who else? Uh, yeah, Christian McCaffrey. I mean, listen, when you look at someone who scores points, McCaffrey's almost guaranteed in a, in a game. This Detroit defense is the weaker side of the ball for them. You know, they, they gave up about 350-plus yards to Baker May- Mayfield. You know, he's had a great season, Baker, but not to insult him, you know, the 49ers' offense is far better. And I feel like Detroit's defense may struggle in this game. And whenever McCaffrey has a great game, you know, the record for the 49ers is just a winning record. So that's how we're going to justify Dave's pick. No, I, I think it's fair. And I think there's room for McCaffrey to work against the Lions. And we'd be interested to see what happens. I, I dare on the side of caution, only because the Lions have one of the best run defences in the league and haven't allowed a 100-yard rusher all season. Um, other than Ty Chandler, I think, in week 17 Oof. when they were through. Great so they are, a great, they are a great run defence. They're a terrible secondary well they're just about average they're, that's their weakness but actually in, as a run stopping team they're pretty good but with McCaffrey what you get is pass catching you get yeah. short passes you get a lot of touchdowns a lot of red zone so actually he could probably only run rush for 50 yards on Sunday and he probably could score you 40 points so I think it's a good pick because if they're going to win the game he needs to score a touchdown so. cool who have you gone with Gus Edwards uh, Gus the bus uh, a lot of talk about Lamar's running <laughs> huh? is, there, is there a ghost in your house Ollie? <laughs> Uh, I think it was an ambulance. Oh, okay. Or, oh, got, is it for Dave? Of, is it? Or the ghost of Dave. <laughs> yeah, it's, the ghost of, it's either taking him away or he's already dead and he's haunting you. Right, okay, good stuff. Just, Dan's, Dan's just bits a Ravens player for fantasy games yeah. and Dave's just fallen death. off his chair. <laughs> yeah. um, Gus Edwards, a lot of talk about Lamar Jackson running the ball and he will run the ball, but Gus, this, this Chiefs defence is weak at the middle um, and weaker since Sunday and the Ravens will run. Run, 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 run. I expect a lot of Gus Edwards, especially at the goal line. He'll score plenty of points. And he's really cheap. He's only 4,300, which means he's 2,200 cheaper than Isaiah Pacheco, who's going up against the Ravens run defence. Good luck. Yeah, that's going to be uh, that's going to be an interesting one. If you would like to get involved with Fantasy Game Day, head to fantasygameday.app or you can get involved on either of your app stores, the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. Just search for Fantasy Game Day app. 18 plus only. Please gamble aware. Uh, preview part one is Kansas City Chiefs at Baltimore Ravens, which coincidentally is the game that we'll be watching together uh, on Sunday night. You're looking forward to watching it with other people, aren't you? No. <laughs> and nobody should be looking forward to watching it with me. No. What we've decided is that Dan will be available for us to use pre-game. So 7 <laughs> until 7.59 mm-hmm. is when Dan is available, at which point we're going to pack him off into a corner, we're going <laughs> to seal him up, we're going to like pile chairs around him <laughs> yeah. so nobody can get anywhere near him. Then he's going to come back at half-time and then I'm sending him home. Okay. Deal. Done. Uh, look, m and Bank Stadium, this is a tasty old yeah. affair. Six straight AFC Championship games for Kansas City. How weird is it that I'm reading the notes that you've made me, Ollie? This must be a bit... <laughs> this must be a bit... I, I might as well just let you do it. You've made the notes. It's a bit like deja vu. I'm not going to lie to you. I have notes here as well. They're the same notes. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, crack on, son. Gonna eat. Crack on. You go first. <laughs> Actually, the same my notes. <laughs> we've, all got the, <laughs> we've all got the same notes. Uh, go on. What, uh, what do you reckon to the game, Ollie? Listen, uh, it's it's going to be a great game. I personally thought the Bills were going to beat Kansas City, but, you know, Mahomes has done it again. Like you said, six straight AFC Championship games is a hell of a record, you know. He hasn't got the same Super Bowls as Tom Brady, but if there's one player who's arguably on his way to becoming the GOAT, it's Patrick Mahomes. Um... I think Baltimore are the best team left out of the four teams in the AFC and the NFC. I personally think they'll win the Super Bowl. But Patrick Mahomes is the type of player that it means 
anything could happen. They might knock out the Ravens. You've seen it before where the bet, the team with a bit of momentum has beaten the better team, and that could happen. I think that. It's because momentum doesn't wide... exist. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Let him carry on. He's on a roll. He's got some just momentum. Prove, just prove my point. It's fine. <laughs> you know, the, the Chiefs' <laughs> offensive weapons is Patrick Mahomes and yeah. it's Travis Kelsey. Their wide receivers aren't up to the standard of, of Baltimore. Baltimore's defense is confusing. It's terrifying. It's electric at the moment. And although Mahomes is the least sacked quarterback in the league, I think he's going to have to use his legs in this game to, afo- to avoid that. You know, you saw a Texans team with plenty of momentum get absolutely destroyed at their maximum effort. Exactly. Okay. Thank so you. Thank can, you all. can I um, cut that one? Cut that one, Andy. Can I? Uh, <laughs> can I just say that we are on this podcast from this moment onwards? We are using the word momentum to describe the phenomenon of making good decisions at good times in the game, and those good decisions perpetuating further good decisions being made, thus giving the appearance of momentum when actually it's just circumstances that have provided players opportunities to make the right decisions at the right time just playing and better, yeah. those good decisions yeah. yeah but there is a phenomenon that the playing better actually allows you to or gives you the space and the freedom to then play better on the next play and the next play which is yeah. what if your defense what, plays well and your offense plays well you keep the ball more and you're more chance of scoring that's that's the game but it's it's actually my more don't start this again i was trying to be helpful <laughs> no, I, was, that, yeah. no, I was trying to be helpful and what you've done is you've taken my good grace <laughs> and you've taken a massive great steaming shit on top of it so fine momentum I, I is now you, Liam. exactly what we say it is there is momentum in sport sod damn it really works for the Texans. Li- uh, Liam, I, I appreciate you Mate, thanks, I Ollie. The I, I knew you uh, would, mate. I, I, you uh, know, thanks, buddy. Uh, what do you make of the game, Dan? I've got extensive notes. You're probably expecting me to sort of sit and say how the Ravens are going to spank the Chiefs, this great Chiefs team, and the great Patrick Mahomes. And I absolutely am going to say that because they're not a great Chiefs team. No. This is the great Patrick Mahomes. Some of his stats. So yeah, you're saying it's his sixth championship game. He's only been in the league six seasons. Yeah. Do you know how many the Chiefs had in their previous 48 years' existence? One. One. Yeah. Um, he's turns out. Do you know how many Andy Reid had in his whole coaching career before Patrick Mahomes? Two. Zero. Oh, really? Never made the championship game. Um, oh, gonna roll with the guessing. That's he's the thrown in the playoff. Patrick Mahomes 38 touchdowns. The Ravens' entire franchise history. 37 passing touchdowns in the playoffs. <laughs> um, <laughs> this guy is is nuts, but this is this is not a good offense. It's not a great offense. And I always say great offense would beat a great defense. And this is the great Patrick Mahomes, but this is not a great Kansas City offense. And last week, they, they look good, I suppose, against a team of bin men and plumbers and electricians that Buffalo managed to scrape off the street. I think half the guys were the guys scraping the snow at the stadium before. It wasn't a good Bills defense, and they, they just about got through. Um, but again, red zone issues, and they got through against the Dolphins, red zone issues. They, they were taking field goals at the start of the game. Field goals at the start of the game. Field goals, at the start, field goals throughout the game against Buffalo. If you try and do that against Baltimore, good luck. Good night. It's done. Um, there is some hope. R- R- Rasheed Rice, I think, is a good wide receiver. I think he's playing well in the system. And I think the, Raven, the way the Ravens set up, I think there will be space in between the linebackers and, and the deeper safeties uh, for Rashi Rice to get his eight, nine, ten yard receptions. And I do expect some miracles from Mahomes. I do expect them to move the ball on certain drives. But I don't think he'll be able to do it consistently enough against this Ravens defense. Um, and then the other side of the ball is if the Ravens can control this game. The Bills had 37 minutes possession against the Chiefs, who had 22 minutes in that championship game, uh, but the Chiefs scored. They scored quickly by nine. They, I think, they averaged nine plays, nine, nine yards per game, nine yards per play, which against the Bills. So even with a massive deficit in time, time yeah. of possession, they won the game. If they lose the time of possession battle against this Ravens team, it's over. They, they, they cannot get away with that. So I would take Mahomes over Lamar every day of the week. Mahomes is one of my favorite players in the league. I think he's my favorite player in history. I absolutely love him. We spoke about it at the start of the season. I would have him against anybody, even Brady. I would take Mahomes. But this week, his team around him are not good enough to beat this Ravens team. This Ravens team is dominant. Let me give you a list of the teams, the playoff teams that the Ravens have beaten at home this season. Texans twice, Rams, Lions, Seahawks, 49ers on the road, Dolphins. They won all those games by 14 points or more. Wow. That's that's 11 wins against, and seven of them against playoff teams. Seven of their wins against playoff teams at home and by double digits. And the other one on the road in San Francisco, but double digits. So that's the Lions and the Niners in the other half of this draw. They've battered them twice. Who have the Chiefs beat on the road this year? They've beat the Patriots. 
They've beat the Chargers, the Raiders, they lost to the Broncos, they beat the Vikings, they beat the Jets and the Jags, and they lost to the only playoff team they've played on the road, which was the Packers. They haven't beat a good team. This Ravens team has a record of 11 wins against teams with a winning record this season. The Chiefs have played nothing like this Ravens team. Nothing. And I don't care about momentum. I don't care about how well they're coming in this Chiefs team. They are going to get smacked in the face by a buzzsaw on Sunday. And this Ravens team are going to smash them into every single part of Baltimore. 20 points plus. Any more? No, I was I was pausing for dramatic effect. Um, I don't think we need to say anything else about this. I might be biased. Uh <laughs> Might, might be. <laughs> Maybe a little. <laughs> I'm only reading stats. <laughs> might be biased. Uh, Mark Andrews back. Mark Andrews back. Ooh. Marlon Humphrey back as well. So the Ravens get healthier. They get their first corner back. Bear in mind last week's performance against the Texans where they didn't give up a touchdown. Um, had Ronald Darby and and, Sloan Ste- and Brian Stevens playing at corners. And then Rocky Seen had to come in because um, Ronald Darby got injured. They've got Marlon Humphrey back this week. So you've got Marlon Humphrey and Ronald Darby both playing. Kyle Hamilton is monster. Roquan Smith, good. Lord, they are going to stop this run game very fast. I think Chiefs will move the ball, but I don't think they'll move it enough. Anything to add, Ollie, or are we just going to go to picks? Um, you know, we have a saying on this podcast, don't bet against Patrick Mahomes, but I think now's the time to. Bet against Patrick Mahomes, yeah, I think that's fair. Uh, who are you going with, Ollie? Uh, Baltimore. Yeah. They're the best team. You're going with the Chiefs, Chiefs obviously. Yeah, yeah, of course you are. Uh, you're going Ravens too. I am uh, I'm going Ravens. I can't see it going any other way. I'd like to hear Ro pick Chiefs here, but I've, Dan's convinced me. So we're moving on. Is that all right with everyone? Yeah. Right, we'll do the second yeah. preview in just a minute here on uh, Odds of Punts. Uh, we'll do Coaching Corner first. All of that coming up after this. Uh, I, 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 I'm just... Um, what? Hmm? Didn't you say... It- didn't give up a touchdown. Last week, yeah. I thought the Texans went in for a touchdown. It was a special team, so it's a punt return. So their defence never gave up a touchdown. I, it, I, I, okay, yeah, I mean... The, the, the Texans' offence didn't score a touchdown in that game. They scored a field goal. No, I, I, I mean, it's good that we've clarified it. Yeah. So they did concede a touchdown. The defence didn't know. But the defence didn't concede. No. The Baltimore Ravens the conceded Baltimore Ravens a touchdown. The Baltimore Ravens defence didn't concede a touchdown. No, no. But the Houston Texans offence didn't yeah, score okay, one. Okay. The special teams team <laughs> But did. Baltimore Ravens conceded a touchdown. Yeah. But the defence didn't. Yeah. So it's clarity. And their offence didn't score one, which is the key point. Because yeah. okay. they scored 45 points the week before. Yeah. Clarity. <laughs> All that momentum coming into the game. Yeah. I, Three you're first not, downs. You're not allowed to take the mickey out of momentum if you don't want to talk about momentum. You, you, you either do or you don't. <laughs> Hypocrite. <laughs> just, just confirming my already confirmed point. Uh, let's do coaching corner next here on Utter Punts. And uh, it comes from something producer Andy said in the Utter Punts WhatsApp group this week um, that sort of rang true in my head as well. And that is, why is it, for those of you that are just new to the NFL, you might want to know this, why is it that the first half of games appears to go so much quicker than the second <laughs> half of games. Now, you might have noticed this, and you'll probably definitely, if you're watching the Super Bowl, you'll definitely notice this. The first half zips past. The second half takes a little longer to come to its conclusion. Now, part of that is because you've had one beer and three wings too many, and you're quite sleepy. The other part of that is that it's an actual phenomenon, Dan. Well, it is. It's, it's a thing, and it, it's just gameplay. It's just ma- the way the match goes. So, towards the end of a game, you'd find... Um, or in the second half, it, you, they're running the ball more to try and kill the clock. So have you, if you're if you're ahead, so the Ravens were ahead on Sunday, and they're just trying to get that game done with as quick as possible. And if they if they keep running the ball, the clock keeps spinning, the clock keeps coming down. Um, and every time you get a first down, it resets, and you can you can take nine ten minutes off the clock in one drive, which can take five minutes. That's it. It, it takes the exact time. It's because the clock never stops. If you're chasing the game, you're throwing passes, which can be incomplete, which stops the clock. And if you're chasing the game when you've got the ball, you might your players might be running out of bounds to stop the clock to keep to give you more time and more possession, to more chance to come back and win the game. So one team's trying to kill the clock, one team's trying to keep it extended. So essentially, if you've got a blowout, mm. what you'll what you'll probably find fast. is the second half of a game will go really quickly. Yep. The reason that um, second halves of games more often than not appear to run more slowly is because the games are still in the balance. Yep. So you've got a team that doesn't want to take those those seconds those minutes off the clock you'll also see the timeouts being used in very clever fashions mm-hmm. in, in in that circumstance as well i guess 
Yeah, exactly. And and so you're you, and the timeouts are used. If you watch the first half, will race by until the last two minutes. So you get the two minute warning, and then teams will be trying to score. And you might end up with two or three different possessions in that final two minutes because they're using their timeouts because they get another set of timeouts at the end of the half. So that if they you can use all three at the end of the first half and use all three at the end of the second half. So they're trying to stop the game to get as many plays in as possible because if and there's, there's the old double play the Patriots should be masters at this, which is at the end of the first half they would keep burning timeouts and keep stopping the clock to get a possession if they were getting the ball in the second half. So they they would end the first half with the ball and then and a chance of scoring and then start the second half with the ball and a chance of scoring. And if you're say ten points behind, yeah, the other team haven't had an offensive play and you could have scored fourteen points and it swings a game completely yeah. and all the game plan then changes at half time. So it's it's just good game management and good gameplay, but it will, does appear. Um, I always think the third quarter is the fastest quarter of any game because no one, everyone's waiting to see what's going to happen and see how the the game's going to play yeah. out. The first, the start of the game goes quite quickly because uh, people are just playing; they're just playing their normal game plan. After that, it starts tightening up as game management comes into it, and it's just tactics. Uh, Ollie, well, I, I think there's two elements to it. Um, like Dan said, you know. Clock management is a big thing with it and establishing the run in the beginning, obviously the clock will go quicker. But I think another thing, especially from a fan perspective, is just the perception of the game. Nerves sometimes, especially if you're watching your own team. As you're coming into the second half, you want your team to win. And if the game's tight, you know, whenever you're nervous about something, time tends to go a bit slower. And not just that, but what you're watching as well, the players on the pitch are going to be more tired. They're going to be a bit more lethargic than they were in the first half. You know, first half, they're going to go in there with all the energy they've got. They're going to try get that first tackle, get that first sack, get that first pass completion. You know, I've played myself for uh, Samuel Steelers. And the second half, you're way more tired than you are going into the first half. So audience is going to notice that. So it's a combination of that. The nerves of watching your own team, even if you're a neutral, you've probably betted on a team Mm. or there's a team you'd prefer to win slightly. And then, the, obviously, the main reason is the clock management element in the first and second quarter. It's the same with any sport. You know, if you're you're watching you're watching football and the United are one 0 up at home to City, <laughs> the clock's going to go Never really happened. really slowly, isn't it? The clock's going to go the same speed, but it will give the appearance that it's going really slowly. Yep. If you're one 0 down against a team you should win, the game's going really fast because you're you're running out of time to score and get the equalizer and go on and win. It's just. Perception is important, and time, time, time is perceived. Isn't it? And time is relative. Yeah. It's ex- exactly that, um, and it's it's that thing of you know, if you're really really busy, you look at the clock, and thirty seconds later, an hour's gone by. And if you're really really not busy, you look at the clock, and thirty seconds later, ten seconds has gone by. That is the relativity of time. Um, shall we move on to the second part of the preview, gentlemen? Detroit Lions at San Francisco 49ers in what is potentially. The tighter of the the two games, I say potentially, it's definitely more likely to be closer this one, Dan, than than the other game. I um, does that does that depend on which Niners team turns up? Yeah, and, and which Lions team turns up because they've thrown in some absolute stinkers at times this year. This, yeah. year, this Lions team. Um, the last time the Lions made the NFC Championship game was that long ago. The Ravens, Jaguars, and Texans didn't exist. Neither Whoa. did I. I no. Neither did I. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's been a while. <laughs> wow. Repeat yeah. that for me. The, the last time they made the championship game, uh, the Texans, Jaguars and Ravens didn't exist. Wow. And neither did Ollie. <laughs> but neither did Ollie. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, it's been a while. It's been a while. And, the, and they impressive. deserve it. And the, and the other two home games there, watching m M&M and the crowd go singing Lose Yourself, 80,000 people singing that at the top of the voices. What an experience that's been for those fans. And you never know. They, they're a dangerous team, Detroit. I think two things I want to say. One, one is, a, is a, I like Jared Goff. I like the Lions offense. But there is a stat that is Jared Goff's record against the 49ers because obviously he used to play for the Rams who are in the same division. So he's 0-5 against the 49ers. Uh, he never beat them. He's got a quarterback rating of 21 against the Oof. 49ers. Um, and he only averages 5.8 yards per attempt against wow. the 49ers. And it's because they put pressure up the middle on him, and we know what happens. He will turn the ball over. This The weakness in the, the 49ers' defense is the run game, and that's the strength of Detroit. So there is a that massive chance there. And I think the real strength of the 49ers' offense is Christian McCaffrey. And the Lions are really good at stopping the run, as I just said before. They've only allowed 100-yard rusher all season. Um, so I, I think I think there's a chance for Detroit. Um but I want to talk a little bit about Brock Purdy, if I may, just for yeah, two minutes, of course. because it, of course. I, I think he's been I think he's been dogged all season with game manager. Um, shouldn't be in the MVP race. It's disgusting he's in the MVP race, and everyone's sort of joyous when the Ravens beat them. 
than Christmas Day because it, it took Brock Purdy out of the MVP race. Mm-hmm. Brock Purdy's an MVP candidate. Stop. Leave him alone. He's playing at a level that I haven't seen a young quarterback play at for a very long time. Um, and he's not as flash. He's not as athletic. He's not as flash as some of these players. But he puts the ball in accurate places and he makes great decisions. And there was a play on Sunday um, where it's the Christian McCaffrey touchdown when he runs for the touchdown. It looks like the Red Sea parts yeah. and Christian McCaffrey runs through. So I want you to I want you to go and find the highlight of this and we'll see what Brock Purdy does because it's a, it's the it was a Brady level move, yeah. right? And I'm, and I'm so I know what you're talking about. So he, there's a, it's a tight end flex. So the tight end's supposed to come from the right hand side of the scrimmage to the left, and there's Kyle Yushek behind him. And the, Kyle Yushek is screaming at the tight end to move to the left. Brock Purdy realizes that the sh- game clock, the the play clock, is down to two. T- Analyzes the fact that they don't need to move the tight end because the formation is looking right. Tells him no, stay there, otherwise they'd have got a delay game penalty. Takes the, the ball, hands it off. Christian McCaffrey goes to 20 yards and wins the game. Now, Christian McCaffrey gets all the headlines. That play happened because of Brock Purdy, a rushing play. Because Speed of thought. his management and his vision and seeing that game, that is not a game manager. It's not. That is a high-level functioning quarterback, yeah, and that's what you need. And I would take him over Jared Goff any, any day, day of the week. week. Yeah, I'm with you. And, and do you know what's, what's really interesting here is if you're questioning... Brock Purdy's ability. I just want you to go back and have a look at how he appeared, how he broke out, how he became mm. known. Mr. Irrelevant. Last yep. pick of the draft. Last pick of the draft. That comes with some baggage when you are the last pick of the draft. And then all of the problems that the Niners had last season with quarterbacks. And the only one that stood up and made a real show of it was Brock Purdy. Yep. There were some more experienced quarterbacks in that quarterback room. There were some more experienced quarterbacks that didn't do a job anywhere near as good as Brock Purdy. And now Purdy leading the stats for the majority of the season as number one quarterback. And there's a reason for it. And I, I agree with you. He is he is exceptional at what he does and has an extraordinarily bright career in front of him. I absolutely agree. And some of the passing on Sunday, that there's a pass to Brandon Ayuk splitting up drops over the back of the linebacker yeah. and in front of the safety which is just beautiful it's a thing of absolute beauty and he's a joy to watch and I'm, I look forward to watching him and hopefully listen he had one bad game against the Ravens defence everybody everybody's having a bad game against you want to go defense. back to that list again Jared Goff had a bad game against the Ravens everybody does um, so yeah he had a bad game okay everyone has bad games Um let him off. I honestly enjoy watching him. Stop lose the thing of he shouldn't be there and just watch him and enjoy him yeah, because enjoy he's brilliant. It. The only problem is so Debo might be out. So Debo Samuel might be out for them. He's fifty feet. He's not he's not trained today. I don't think he'll play. And he's a big loss. He's a big loss for so them. His shoulder. Um, yeah. Yeah. Ouch. So he might not even make the Super Bowl. That's how bad it is. Oh, yeah. um, without him they he's do lose a bit so of a gadget. Yeah. It does. It does. It puts a bit more pressure on uh, on George Kittle, definitely. But I think I think they'll probably have enough. Uh, Ollie, what do you make of this game? You, you mentioned earlier, didn't you, that the Niners are on this incredible winning record when Christian McCaffrey plays well. The stat is when he goes for 75 or more, they are 11-1, and one, which is astonishing. So, he, I mean, the Lions don't even need to give up 100 yards. If they give up 75, they're in trouble. Yeah, I mean, he's one of the stars in a team full of them. But just to address the Brad Purdy thing, I completely agree. Uh, there were reports I saw earlier this week, take it with a pinch of salt, but there were reports that they were interested in Tom Brady it, mm. you know, before the start of the season and bringing him in. And they said to Brock, you know, if we can get Brady, he will start. But if not, you'll be the man. Yeah. And um, you'll be the man. And, you know, if Tom Brady came into this team, if he started and if he put up the exact same stats that Brock has put this <laughs> season... Then the t- then yeah, everyone would be saying point. he's the goat. The he should point. be the MVP. Yep. But because it's Brock Purdy, because he's not fashionable, because he's seen as a system quarterback, then people are insulting him. But to look at the other side, to look at the Detroit perspective, what they've done is incredible. Over three years with Dan Campbell yep. and their general manager, they have done it exactly right. They have built up with draft picks, a, an experienced quarterback who's been to a Super Bowl in Jared Garth. And look at some of the weapons they have. Jameer Gibbs, Hutchinson, David Montgomery. They are excellent. And Dan Campbell is a coach that I personally would run through a brick wall for. He's got everything He's got everything there is that you want in a head coach. 
that Lions locker room and that city would die for him, I think. And I wouldn't underestimate them. I know San Francisco have, uh, you know, they played poorly against the Packers, but they still won. But I wouldn't count Detroit out of this game. I, I think they're an excellent team. Maybe they've over overachieved, some would say, but I think there's a chance they get to Super Bowl. I think this is going to be a tight, tight game. Um, I think you're right. I, I, I think what I enjoy about the, um, the Lions is they've got a little bit of everything. Yeah. So yeah. they they can play really expansive um throwing football. They can, you know, go to that dink dunk offense. They they've got a tough D-line. They they can be a bit nasty. I mean, mm -hmm. Dave's utter punt of the week last week should should show you that. I think it's important to be able to have that in your team. I think you've got to have a little bit of dog otherwise mm -hmm. otherwise there's um you know, you get a bit soft. Um they are a joy to watch. I just wonder whether this is the season for them or whether this is the springboard for future successes. The problem is, is we said about the Eagles last week, you never know when you're going to get back to a game like this. Yeah. You know, the Packers are on the rise. They look a good team, don't they? And the Samson has got now a bit. They're a good young team. So will Detroit even be the best team in their own division next year? Um, they've got to get back out of that division. They've got to get back into the playoffs. They've got to win another playoff game to get back to this point. It's tough. This is your chance. This might be your only chance. You, you've got to give it everything. You're right about the lines. That the, the offensive line and defense line are both very, very good in Detroit. It's almost like Eminem wrote a song about that, you know. I think it was called Lose Yourself, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm sure he'll be nice. performing in some way, shape or form. He's on next week. Yeah. He's coming on. Yeah. Yeah. What, on Otter Punt? Yeah, yeah. Are you going to sort that for us, are you? Mm -hmm. Are you talking about the chocolate M and M's? Yeah. Or? Yes, Dave's, Dave's going to bring M and M's. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Pe peanut okay. is the only way to go. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, who are we picking? <laughs> Lions. Uh, it's forty niners. Sorry, I, sorry. I don't know why I was pausing. It's forty niners. Niners. Ollie. Uh, right. I'm a Vikings fan. They're an NFC North rival. I don't want to see them win another Super Bowl. You know, a Super Bowl pardon before the Vikings, but. I'm going with Detroit. Oof. I think they're going to win this game. I knew I should have gone second. I can't believe you've given me the deciding vote. I was going to go Lions, but you've given me the deciding vote, so I've got no choice, and I'm going to have to go for the 49ers. You haven't. If you think that... I, listen, I'm close with it. I don't think it's one... I don't think it's one-sided. I'm, I'm going listen, 49ers. We're the only podcast that picked Detroit, if we do. And that's, that's the majority. Go with your heart, Liam. I'm going to go with what my head. Like? I'm going to go with my head, and I'm going to say San Francisco 49ers. Good boy. Um, I nearly <laughs> went with my heart. I nearly went with my heart, but um, no, I didn't. In the end, uh, right bets for this week. You are on a roll, yeah, Dan. Know, a roll. It. Two yeah. consecutive acres mm. in. Yeah, ten for ten so far in the playoffs. You're doing all right. Wow. Um, so I've got a, a bit funky this one because I've got some player lines which I want you to put in with a double, so you can put all four in if you want. Um, so. Rashi Rice, over 59.5 yards against the Ravens. I think he'll get a lot of touches. I don't think he'll score many points, but I think he'll get a lot of touches, a lot of yards. Gus Edwards, over 41.5 rushing yards. Sam Laporte, over 48.5 reception yards. And Christian McCaffrey, under 87.5 rushing yards, as for all points I've mentioned before. Yeah. Uh, some bookies won't let you put all those four into a hacker if you can, and Skybet do, it's 16 to 1. Um, so what I would say is, get on the Ravens, get on the 49ers, that right? And then put a treble in with each four of these as one. So make a treble with Rishi Rice, a treble with Edwards, a treble with the Porter, a treble with Christian McCaffrey. Okay. Because um, the the Raven, Evens, Ravens Niners, I'm going to put what we won in the seventh, sixth timer, the fourth timer, all on the double. So we're going straight into the Ravens win, nice. Niners win. I'm going to take that up to a lovely amount of money. <laughs> but you have some fun T and tell put me the lines fair. in as well. Tell me how fair. Yeah. Uh, Ollie, what are you going with? So I've got a two anytime touchdown scorer bet with Jameson Williams and Patrick Mahomes. So, so just out of curiosity, you've got that bet or your Uncle yes. Dave has handed you that bet? I've got that bet. Okay. Right, so like, so you've like got more them. chance. Everybody lump on this week. So, <laughs> so, you know, Williams was a high draft pick by Detroit. And he's, you know, he had an ACL injury, but he's further from recovering from it. That was in college, his ACL injury. Now, this 49ers defense, we've named some of the stars. Nick Bosa, Chase Young, Fred Warner, I love Dre Greenlaw. Um, Jared Goff is going to have to look at all available weapons. He can't just do the same, hand it off to Montgomery, hand it off to Gibbs, throw it to Laporte. He's going to have to use all his weapons. You know, Detroit have got to put everything in this game. So I think he's a good option. Mm -hmm. And Patrick Mahomes, listen, he hasn't had a rushing touchdown all year. But, again, <laughs> he hasn't, but... 
This is, like I said earlier, this is a confusing, effective Ravens defense, and Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs are going to have to do everything they can to try win because it's all under the line to get to the Super Bowl. Is he saying um, that he thinks Patrick Mahomes is going to go in for a rushing touchdown? Mm. I, they, 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 they've lost Joe Tooney. I've just, it's been, I've just read Joe Tooney, their guard, he's out of the game. Oof. He's their left guard. That's a big loss on that well, offensive line. Look, I, mean, good, I'd, 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 I look forward to him running behind that, yeah. Well, listen, I think he's going to have to use his legs to try and get a touchdown against his bottom defence. It's his bloody life, worth. I think, the way this Ravens team is going to come after him. <laughs> no, That's what shout. I mean. Who else is going to give it to on the goal line, Ollie? You're absolutely right. He'll take it himself. He's that sort of player. So- that's a 19 to 1 yeah. for the double. Like All right, good like stuff. If that comes in, you understand that Ollie is going to be lauded for the next. If he scores a touchdown, I'm going to find months. Ollie in that beer can. Yeah. I'm going to absolutely wallop him. You will be, you will be in your chair <laughs> fort, you know, mate. Put you vibes will, out we'll there, have a Ollie. guard on your portcullis. There is no chance you're going to be let out <laughs> of your little corner. Regardless of what happens, you're staying in that corner. Is that understood? That's fair. Uh, time fair. for this. It is utter punts of the week. A Clark, I'm going first. Uh, Saquon Barkley gets my nomination for utter punts of the week. I'm going to give you a direct quote from Saquon. So, could I see myself in another uniform? Yeah, it's possible. You go through the tag process, you realise how much of a business it is. Saquon Barkley, you were carrying the hopes and the dreams of Big Blue. The entire giant supporting network, you had their hopes and and dreams on your shoulders. Not only have you dropped them, you've trodden on them and rubbed their faces in the dirt. Utter punt of the week. I, I blame them. Ownership who gave him a terrible contract in this offseason with a £10,000 win bonus and he was running on one leg for him. Um, terrible management of your team. Um, and, you know, welcome to Baltimore, Saquon. I'll invite all <laughs> wonderful running backs to Baltimore. We'll have Derek Henry, you, Dalvin Cook. We'll have them all. Um, yeah. Yeah, we'll what, Liam? Yeah, I, I could do a job, I reckon. Behind that offensive line, you probably yeah. could. Um, can I, I'll go Matt Davis, yeah. uh, owner, of the Ra- owner of the Raiders. Um, hired uh, John Gruden, who remember a couple of years ago, to a 10-year contract and fired him after the first season. Oof. And and gave the job to Rick Bisaccia, who was the special teams coach. And he came in and, and had a good record. So he had he went in, he came in, he went 7-5, and five, which was the highest win percentage record of any Raiders coach for 24 years. Rick Bisaccia, but then didn't get the full-time job. Um, so Matt Davis didn't give him the job even though he was doing really well he gave it to Josh McDaniels uh, who didn't do really well who went 9-16 and 16 in his tenure and got fired and then the, touch, the caretaker came and it was Antonio Pierce Antonio Pierce has come in and he's had a winning record 5-4 and four. I think Matt Davis has, made, has compounded a bad mistake by not giving Rich Patrick the job by giving the job to Antonio Pierce um, there are some great coaching candidates out there Bill Belichick being one of them um, there's Bobby Slowick, there's Ben Johnson, there's a lot of up-and-coming players. You're giving it to the guy who's in the building, I understand that, but I think you're making a second mistake to make up for your first one. And then you've hired your GM, which is the sacked GM from the LA Chargers, Tom Telesco, to come in and be the GM. So not good enough for one of your rivals in your own division, uh, but good enough for you, good. AFC West coaches next year, Jim Harbaugh, Sean Payton, Andy Reid, Antonio Pierce. Good luck. Good luck. Ooh, the epitome of throwing good money after bad. Mm. Ollie, what have you got? Well, gentlemen, this is a uh, keen joint family nomination right. for Utter Punt of the Week, so I've got a little tale to tell you. Uh-oh. So, our lovely and kind-hearted producer, Bell, was showing interest in the huge games that were happening on Saturday. <laughs> I know where this and, is going. <laughs> <laughs> and popped into the group chat and asked if there were any tips for the game. Dan, as soon as he spotted this, first took the time to chastise Bell for not having taken the tips from the show, somewhat arrogantly, some might say, came in and said, take the Ravens at minus 21 and a half points. Mm. Then the game happened. A tight first half saw tension ramp up, ramp up. Liam politely asked if the game was tighter than expected. Dave replied, yep, and then suggested Dan might have turned off notifications. We all agreed this was likely. As the half wound down, Texans had the opportunity at a fourth and eight to either go for the field goal or go for the, uh, go for the touchdown, which would have taken the lead. I suggested in the group chat, and I had a conversation with producer Bell, where I said I would have gone for it on fourth and eight because this is a Ravens defense that is dangerous and you want to try get as many points as you can. Um, and Bell replied, maybe they want a lead at halftime, which is innocent, some would say. Nothing there. Let's spin it forward two hours. Ravens romp home with a victory and Dan arrives back in the chat. Then ensues <laughs> a bit of back and forth over bet. 
Dan, rightfully happy, slightly inebriated, one would hope and assume, when Bell <laughs> is suddenly on the receiving end of abuse for, quote, hoping the Texans would take the lead. Yeah. Well, when Bell pointed out he'd bet on the Ravens to score over 34 and a half points and had been supporting them throughout, Dan was still angry he hadn't taken the minus 21 and a half tip. In response to asking why he was getting this abuse, Dan replied with the immortal line, <laughs> it's my team, you knob. Yeah. <laughs> This nomination is made with the admiration that level of tempest- <laughs> tempestuous combustion deserves. We salute you, Dan. And yes, Dave does get it, but you're still an utter punt. I, uh, I <laughs> can't argue with that really. <laughs> the, the, the actual, the best message in that entire exchange has been missed. It yeah. just said, smile, listen, follow. follow. That's all it said from him. Smile, well, listen, Well, it's only the week follow. after. We'd had your missed bet on the sixth time which should have come in because you, you didn't do the right, right line. And then no, he no, no. A, no, no, no. Let's have it right. right. You said over 34 and a half. I have a different bet provided to you. They didn't provide the line. I went as close as I possibly could, which prior to that, you had said, if you haven't got that line, go as close as you possibly can. I so also I did. said cash out after the Bills game. Yeah, which is yeah. my my error and also <laughs> producer Andy's error. When I and said to him, should I cash out? He went, no, roll the dice. And to start off with, coming onto that group saying, has anyone got any tips? And all I said was, actually, there's a really cool podcast that I listen to that gives up tips every week. And one of the guys on there, the clever one, has just got a six-timer and a four-timer. Oh, go and listen to that. It's well, called Dave, Punts. Hold on, hold on. Hang on. I have listened to you boys talk about how... Things can rapidly change, mm. and even on the day, things can change. So I checked in with you lads just to make sure things hadn't changed. I'd followed your advice. I even overbetted on the Ravens. I Which was silly. Point five. Smile, follow, <laughs> listen. <laughs> Bell, I got your back, mate. I'm, I'm Donald Trump oh. in you. Build the wall. Hands face, hands face space. I am... Smile, listen, follow. I think we can. I am. I think this argument could go for a little while. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slowly fade this out whilst these two are arguing, and we will see you at Beer Keller on Sunday. If not, we will see you next week. Smile, listen, follow. Beer Keller.